Well, hi everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Wilson Green and I'm an attorney with uh, the Disaster Relief Project at Legal Aid of North Carolina. And Legal Aid's Disaster Relief Project provides legal assistance and education to survivors of natural disasters in North Carolina and supports long-term recovery in disaster impacted communities throughout the state. And today I'm going to provide some general information about the Rebuild North Carolina Homeowner Recovery Program and how it specifically determines whether um, an eligible applicant's home should be repaired or replaced. And as with all of our videos, if you watched them before, I'll just quickly mention that this presentation is not intended to be any kind of specific legal advice, but instead is a, a general overview of a state program in North Carolina and a specific issue that comes up a lot. And so if you're watching this and have a, um, a legal question or wish to receive legal assistance as related to disaster relief, feel free to call the Legal Aid Helpline at the number listed below, 1-866-219-5262. And I've also listed our website um, where you can get more information about our project. And these, uh, this number and this website will be on, on most of the slides during this presentation. So this is a, um, one video in a series that um, gives information about how to qualify for different disaster relief programs. And most, if not all of our videos, um, this one included, apply directly to the Rebuild North Carolina um, program. Rebuild is a state-run, federally funded program that was created to help survivors of Hurricanes Matthew and Florence rebuild or replace their homes. And we already have several videos on our YouTube page, I think on our Facebook, on our website um, that kind of give general information about this program, how to apply for it, what the application requires and things like that. Um, but today I'm specifically gonna address, like I said earlier, um, how the program determines whether it will repair or um, replace an eligible applicant's home um, depending on you know, different circumstances. I've also listed Rebuild's um, website in the middle of the slide there where a lot of this information is also available. And broadly speaking, this question of um, whether the Rebuild program will repair or replace a home, it kind of turns on two distinct factors. Um, the type of home itself, the type of house you live in, and then the extent of hurricane damage that your home experienced. So I'm gonna kind of go into a little more detail for each of these factors, and then I'll put them together to kind of circle back to this initial question. So the first question is, um, or the first factor I should say, is the type of home. Rebuild North Carolina recognizes seven different types of eligible homes that can be um, repaired or replaced through their program. So you see a list of them there, single family dwellings, which might also be referred to as, you know, stick built homes or brick built homes, duplexes, townhomes, modular homes, which are those which are um, assembled kind of in sections in a factory and then transported to your property where they're kind of put together. Um, manufactured homes, which is really just another word for mobile homes like single wides or double wides. Um, housing cooperatives, co-ops, um, and, and condos. And the vast majority of, of you who might be applying to the Rebuild program likely um, live in three of these, either single family dwellings like stick-built homes, um, manufactured homes, mobile homes, another word for mobile homes, um, or modular homes. And I would imagine that most of you likely know what kind of house you live in, what kind of structure, um, but just in case, there's a couple kind of easy um, ways to know. If your home had wheels on it um, or, or still sits on wheels, it's most likely a, a manufactured home, a mobile home. If your house was pre-made in individual sections, like in a factory, and then each of those sections were delivered to your property and then put together, um, it's probably a modular home. And then if your house was built you know, on site where your property is now, from raw materials like you know, like wood or brick or what have you, um, it, it's likely just a single family dwelling or what Rebuild calls a single family dwelling. 
And in reality, what this means is that most people's houses, um, the, at least the type of structure, most structures are eligible for rebuild assistance. The main exception to this rule or, or the main exceptions are that campers, RVs, um, houseboats, or really any kind of building that's not attached to a main dwelling unit. So like garages or carports, sheds, all of these are ineligible structures. Um, rebuild cannot repair or replace any of, kinds, any of these types of structures, unfortunately. So this is kind of the first factor that Rebuild looks at, you know, the type of, of structure itself. The second factor that Rebuild looks at um, is, you know, the extent of damage that your home experience, experienced. Um, and Rebuild determines the level of damage by completing an inspection of your home to estimate the cost of repairs to it. This inspection is completed after you have submitted your application with all the relevant documents that the program requires. Um, and the inspection only assesses damage that was caused by Hurricanes Matthew or Florence. It doesn't count any kind of damage that um, happened before the relevant storm or, or didn't happen as a result uh, of the storm. And they have ways to kind of figure out what damage might have been caused by you know, a hurricane and, and what wasn't. And once this um, inspection is completed, the rebuild program enters the results of it into um, a software program, computer software program called Xactimate, which essentially collects the costs um, for materials and labor and equipment for your local area so they can kind of arrive at an accurate estimate of um, the repair work that needs to be completed. So this is the um, second factor that Rebuild looks at, you know, the calculated cost of repairs um, to the home due to hurricane damage. So if we put these two um, factors together, you know, the type of structure and the level of damage that Rebuild calculates, we can answer the um, initial question that was posed, you know, whether the program will repair or replace an eligible applicant's home. And I've created kind of two charts to, to lay this all out. Um, this first chart um, applies to um, applicants whose homes are manufactured homes, mobile homes. Um, so we first ask, as you can kind of see in the, in the left side, the left side of the chart, whether the home is a single wide, whether it's a double wide, um, and what and the year or the date that it was manufactured. So that's kind of the left column. And then if you look at the top row, we look at the calculated damage amount. So this is kind of the type of structure and then um, the damage amount. And you'll first notice that um, if you look kind of um, towards the middle of the chart, or I should say the right column, you'll see that any kind of mobile home, um, you know, whether it's a single wide, whether it's a double wide, um, regardless of the year it was built, if it had or if experienced um, less than $1,000 in hurricane damage, it is not eligible for the rebuild program. So there's essentially, there's a minimum floor of $1,000. However, if you have more than $1,000 in damage, the program will repair or replace your mobile home depending on different circumstances. So we can kind of go down the line. Um, for single wide homes, if you have more than $1,000 in damage, but less than $5,000, um, the program will repair it. Um, if you have over $5,000 in damage to your single wide, then the program will replace it. Um, Basically the same for double wides, except the, um, the cap is essentially um, increased to 10,000. So if you have between $1,000 in damage and $10,000 in damage, they will repair. If you have more than $10,000 in damage, they will replace. And then lastly, if we go to the third row, um, if your house was your mobile home, whether it's a single wide, whether it's a double wide, if it was manufactured prior to June 15th, 1976, and you have more than $1,000 in damage, they will replace your home completely. Um, I won't get into why that date is significant and why, why that date is important for the rebuild program, but just know that if you have more than $1,000 um, in damage, $1,000 in damage or more, I should say, um, 
and your house was um, built prior to June 15th, 1976, then you are eligible to have a full replacement. So that's mobile homes. And then we'll go to all the other types of structures, which we talked about earlier. These, this is um, anything that's not considered a um, manufactured home. So um, single family dwellings, modular homes, townhomes, et cetera, et cetera. And just like mobile homes, all these other types of structures, we look to the damage amount um, to determine whether this kind of home is repaired or, or replaced. Um, and also just like mobile homes, any of these structures with, with less than $1,000 in damage is ineligible for um, rebuild assistance. Now, if your home, you know, your non-mobile home, you know, any of these types, stick-built homes, townhomes, et cetera, if any of these homes has more than $1,000 in damage, determining whether it's gonna be repaired or reconstructed by the program can be slightly complicated. So just bear with me for a minute. So if you have more than $1,000 in damage, but the damage costs less than 70% of the home's tax value prior to the time of the relevant hurricane, then the home will be repaired. So that's that kind of second, or I should maybe say third um, column, damage less than 70% of pre-storm tax assessed value. In those cases, it will be repaired. It's probably easiest to explain this with an example. So um, if I owned or I own a two bedroom, one bathroom brick home with a tax value of $50,000, meaning the tax value prior to Hurricane Florence struck in 2018 was $50,000. Um, but you know that's the value that's actually listed on my tax bill that I got prior to Hurricane Florence. Um, I applied to the rebuild program and they determined that the cost needed to repair the hurricane damage to my home will be $15,000. So they go in, they do an inspection and they say, um, you know, Mr. Green, you have $15,000 in damage. If we do the quick math, we see that 70% of 50,000, which is the, was the tax value of my home prior to Florence, that's $35,000. Like I said, they when they did the inspection, they said that there's $15,000 in damage. Obviously $15,000 is less than $35,000. So in that case, they would repair my house. It's also worth mentioning that $15,000 is more than $1,000. You know, if it was less than 1,000, then I would be ineligible as I already mentioned. We can also take the same example and kind of go to the next column. So same example, you know, $50,000 in tax value, you know, for my tax bill um, that came prior to Hurricane Florence. But maybe when they did the inspection of my house, they, they um, found that I had $42,000 in damage. There was a lot more work that had to be done. Obviously, $42,000 is more than $35,000, which is 70% of the tax value. So in that case, they would actually replace my home. And then if you'll see in the last two columns, there's kind of a couple of other situations where rebuild might replace your home. First, if the amount of damage to your home is more than $70,000, regardless of the tax value, um, in those cases, rebuild or replace your home. So like I said, in those cases, they do not care about what your house was valued at. If you have more than $70,000, in um, storm damage from one of the hurricanes. In those cases, they will replace your home if you're eligible for the program. And then lastly, if your home is determined to be not suitable for rehabilitation, which is like their own phrase that Rebuild uses, um, in those cases, the home will be replaced. And properties might be deemed not suitable for rehabilitation if they are deemed unsafe to inspect by rebuilds, maybe there's so much damage that their inspector can't even get into the house safely. Um, also, this comes up in cases where uh, maybe your home is located within a, a hundred year floodplain and it's not elevated. In those cases, they may choose just to replace it because it, it doesn't make sense to repair a house that, that could very well be flooded soon. So I know this is a lot of information. It's maybe slightly complicated, um, but the main takeaways are this. If your home, if your house has less than $1,000 in damage, it will not be repaired or replaced by a rebuild. That, that's for mobile homes, that's for modular homes, that's for duplexes, that's every kind of house you could live in that's eligible for the program. 
if it has um, less than $1,000, it's ineligible. If you specifically live in a mobile home, rebuild will first ask whether it's single wide or a double wide, and then the year it was built, and then it will look to the calculated um, damage amount. And like um, that chart showed, um, there's different caps for single wides and double wides. And then if it was manufactured prior to um, June of 1976, um, they might do a full replacement if there's over $1,000 in damage. And then lastly, if you live um, in a house that's not a mobile home, but is an eligible structure for the rebuild program, in most cases, rebuild will look at the calculated damage amount and compare it to its prior, to its tax value um, prior to the relevant hurricane. The program also has discretion to um, fully replace homes that has that have more than $70,000 in damage, regardless of the tax value, um, and also homes that are deemed unsuitable for rehabilitation due to the level of damage. And of course, you, you might be wondering, what does it really mean to repair or rehabilitate or replace or reconstruct my home? Um, you know, maybe these seem kind of straightforward, but, but these words kind of do have specific meanings in the rebuild program. So I'll just quickly go through this before I close out. Um, in the case of mobile homes, if rebuild determines that it will repair your house rather than replace it. So once again, going back to that chart, if they say maybe you live in a single wide and you have $3,000 worth of damage and they rebuild says that they will repair your house, um, Basically, all that means is that they're going to repair it. I mean, that, that seems straightforward, but repair means repair. So if you have a leaky roof, they will hire a contractor or they will, it's in some way, they will come and repair that leaky roof. Um, they will not replace your home. Of course, when they say replacement, what they mean is they actually will replace your mobile home. They replace it with a, with a, a new model. Um, they have discretion to, to choose these models, but in Basically, the principle is that they will provide you a home that is um, was similar in size and layout to your previous home. So if you lived in a three bedroom double wide and the program deems you eligible for a full replacement, um, in theory, they will provide you with a three bedroom double wide, um, you know, with some caveats and, and some discretion. If you don't um, live in a mobile home, you know any of these other types of structures, again, repair means repair. So if you live in a brick house and you have a, a leaky roof and you're not eligible for replacement, they will come and they will repair your roof. Um, but if they do determine that you are eligible for something more than repair, um, what I'm calling is a replacement, um, Rebuild uses the word reconstruct or reconstruction. And basically what that means is that they're gonna come out there um, they're going to demolish your old home and they're going to construct a new house um, that is in similar size and, and in some cases similar layout to your last house, just like I said with mobile homes. And in this case, um, with homes that are not mobile homes, you know, um, single family dwellings, stick built homes, brick, brick built homes, modular, all those kind of things, um, Rebuild has specific floor plans. Um, that they choose from um, in determining what kind of house you get. So I've, I've listed the chart that they have on in their manual here. Um, so you can kind of see, I mean, in most cases, say you have a, you know, uh, a three bedroom, two bath house that's going to be replaced. In theory, they would, they would choose a home off of this chart with, with a similar layout, you know, the Whitney one or the Hawkins one, for example, numbers eight and eight and nine, um, you know, down to, number 12, Haywood, two ranch, and down even further. All, all of those have three bedrooms, two bath. Um, and so they would um, essentially choose a home with the same um, you know, general size, same kind of square footage. Um, but these floor plans are all predetermined by rebuild. And you would obviously you know, communicate with, with those of the program that would be deciding this and, and um, you know, advocate for yourself or, or have us advocate for you in, in some cases. So again, you know, the main takeaway is that um, if Rebuild decides to repair your home, they will do just that. If they decide to replace it, they will 
either provide you with a new mobile home that generally matches um, the size of your old mobile home, or in the case of non-mobile homes, they will construct you a new house that is generally the same size and layout from your old house, you know, choosing from that list of predetermined floor plans. So in a nutshell, that's, that's basically how a rebuild determines whether to repair or replace your home. Of course, you know, I've already said it, but it goes without, maybe it goes without saying that you have to actually qualify for the program. You have to apply, um, you have to provide all of the information they require before you even get to this stage. Um, and also mention that if, you know, if you're seeking assistance with your application to rebuild North Carolina, or you, maybe you've already submitted an application and you're trying to navigate the next steps, um, legal aid may be able to help you. Our, our project may be able to help you. And so again, I've listed our number and our website and, and you know, the ways in which you can contact us um, to, to get um, legal assistance. And I thank you very much for listening. Um, good luck with everything. Please stay safe and be looking out for videos um, coming from us in the future. Thank you.